And what we're actually doing here, this is kind of an interesting thing actually um, in, uh, in Guild Wars 2 that you can do. There's a lot of... The game was originally designed to be a PvP game, so you have some kind of interesting mechanics. So, for example, what we do here is we actually all stealth ourselves, um, so all the minions oh, wow. run towards us. Uh, yeah, so we go into stealth yeah, to make sure Literally shadow melt, yeah, 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 yeah. it actually works in raid. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and also, uh, bonus as well, uh, when the orb gets pushed for the first time, it gets a new mechanic, and this one definitely is a bit of a pain to deal with. Um, so Dude, of, this is so cool! Yeah, yeah, there's one thing that's really interesting about this fight, is that getting a smooth transition is really important. This is something that, again, a lot of um, Guild Wars 2 players, definitely myself included, are not used to, but I imagine uh, yourself, you'd be much more kind of in tune with this. You really need to deal with the adds well. You need to make sure that you're stabilized before moving on to the next phase, otherwise you're going to have serious problems. Yeah, it also leads to a lot of false progression where if you're mm. not fully consistent and you know how to get past something, you run into the situation where you end up progressing things past that or lucking into a way lower pull when you haven't actually worked out how to deal mm. with that earlier stuff. And it leads to a lot of regression later when you have to go back and change the stuff you did earlier. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we go for a- You guys using it, you guys using that, uh... <laughs> That strat over there is pretty funny. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. yeah. The, the little <laughs> dirt, that's good. It's the big brain. It's the big brain strategy right there. All right, so super nice to talk to you, man. Uh, we have not met before. I know earlier you said you had watched my stream a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, um, I I always watch the, uh, the WoW World's first race. I find it really interesting. Uh, you know, even though I, I haven't played WoW uh, that much, um, not recently, anyway. I played like the like the old versions of WoW, right? Not the not the modern versions of WoW. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. No, I I love watching the races. Really exciting uh, to see the different strategies and different approaches the teams have, uh, and you know, just to just to see who wins, right? <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's super. Yeah, the WoW race world first has definitely taken off into like a thing of its own. That's for sure. But one thing, so I actually even started playing, I had like a bunch of people in my chat, they were like, you have to try Guild Wars 2. So I like, I tried it, um, I think it was like a couple months ago, I played it for two days. I think I made a character called Cheeto Finger Dust or something like that. But it, like, it looked hilarious. It looked, it, it looked really cool. A raider of mine, Rivens, actually used to play a good bit of Guild Wars 2. Um, and he like kind of showed me around and did some of the content. So I've done very low level uh, content in that game. I do not, I'm not very knowledgeable about it at all, but I do kind of understand how a bit of the classes work, but I do want to just ask you like a little bit about like how PVE works in general. And then after that, uh, kind of go over the exact boss. I'd love to actually watch a video with you, uh, of, of, it could be your kill and just kind of tell me about how a lot of the mechanics work and like your thought process behind, uh, uh, behind like the decisions you had to make in progression, like stuff like that. Cause I just want to like learn how the decision making differs. Um, so what, uh, what did you think about this raid? Do you like to see stuff like that from Guild Wars? Oh yeah, you know th this was. It's kind of what uh, a lot of the the tryhards have wanted for a, a really long time. It's just never really existed. Um, you know, like Arena Net have been quite against the idea of difficulty settings for a very long time in the game. So a lot okay. of PvE content has ended up kind of weird, right? Where it's it's really hard if you are really new to the game, but once you understand the combat system, it becomes really, really trivial uh, because a lot of the time there aren't really DPS checks, there aren't really healing checks, mechanics aren't super punishing, right? It's a lot of the difficulty is the initial learning curve in the game. Uh, well, that's how it's been historically. This is the first time where they've designed an encounter that is pretty clearly designed um, to be tackled by uh, players who really know what they're doing um, and to actually require some strategy, right, uh, on how to essentially do enough damage to the boss while also handling the mechanics. If you don't have a solid approach to it, you will essentially run out of time um, to beat this. Uh, additionally, um, Guild Wars 2 is a little bit different in its combat system. You have stuff like the downstate, right, as well. You obviously know that because you played a little bit of the game. And that's, that's a mechanic that hasn't really been designed around so in a lot of raids, you fail a mechanic and you go down state, but then, oh, hang on a minute. You just walk over to the player and you revive them. So you don't get punished as hard as you would in a game, uh, say World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy, where if you die, it's like, well, you're kind of dead, right? Obviously you well, have um, some and stuff. 
Yeah, you have some battle reses in mm -hmm. WoW and basically an infinite amount of them in Final Fantasy. However, mm -hmm. like there's like debuffs in some yeah. fights. If you have anyone die, it's basically over kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, okay, that's really interesting then. So you so so you mentioned earlier that like they've been against difficulty settings. Is this a new difficulty setting or is this the content that they released for everyone? Uh, yeah, yeah. So with the recent release of the new expansion, uh, Arena have decided to really opt to uh, essentially add a hard mode to everything. So there's typically uh, a story mode, which is what you play through in the story. Uh, then there's a normal mode, which is kind of like the instant repeatable version of that. So you might, you know, you farm that every week, right? Just the normal stuff. And then after that, there is a challenge mode, which is a fight that has similar mechanics, kind of building on top of the normal mode. Uh, but it will typically be tuned much tighter. Things will be much more punishing. There might be extra mechanics uh, and so on like that. And this is actually a design principle that they intend to continue uh, for all content, right? Uh, one thing that um, has happened in Guild Wars 2 is that all content was kind of standalone, right? Um, so, you know, the raids would be their own thing. Uh, like, dungeons would be their own thing, essentially. The story would be its own thing. And this meant that you kind of had to wait a really long time to get content that you were interested in. Uh, but now what ArenaNet are doing is they're kind of saying, well, we're going to release a piece of story content, and that story content's going to have a boss in it. That's going to be a strike mission, which is uh, very similar to, like... Um, the way Final Fantasy has it, it's kind of like a boss in a room that you just fight, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, there's going to be a challenge mode for all of this content that we release. So what's really exciting about um, stuff like the recent uh, set of bosses that have come out is that uh, if all things go according to plan, that means that there should actually be more content like this uh, in a way that doesn't disrupt um, other players who may not be interested in really challenging stuff because they can just play the normal mode, right? And they don't have to yeah, that do makes all the sweaty sense. stuff, right? What, what, so what is the, like, so typically in MMOs, something that's always a very, very fine balance is trying to reward you with something and where you feel like the amount of effort you put something in, you get a re reward that's at, like, that makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. like you put in the time, you feel like you get it. So in WoW, for example, like in Mythic, you get good gear because it's really hard to get 20 people together and stuff like that. And, and, you know, it's like really, really hard content. And Final Fantasy is done in a completely different way. The, the outside of, well, Savages, it's really weird, like the difficulty in that game. But you said you played a little bit, so you do understand the, mm -hmm. yeah. the raid system. Yeah. So, like, Ultimates is like, it's basically just for like some mog and an achievement. Um, what, uh, so how, how exactly does this challenge mode work in Guild Wars 2? What are the rewards you get for completing this? Uh, so the rewards are a little bit of an interesting, uh, an interesting sore, a sore spot in Guild Wars 2. You typically don't get anything super exclusive um, for doing this stuff. Um, you, there is a title for doing it, right? Um, and that will definitely be, you know, a pretty prestigious title, right? Uh, it's yeah. Cool, you know, that's pretty cool. And there is actually uh, something called an infusion, which is kind of like a particle effect around your character uh, that you get basically for a, a, a very heavily discounted price, right? Uh, for beating the uh, beating this challenge mode. Well, all four of the challenge modes that came out with End of Dragons, actually. Um, uh, but you can actually obtain the infusion uh, by buying it from other players. So it's kind of like a, a potential like super kind of um big rare drop that you can get from repeating these challenge modes weekly sure. that you can then use to say buy something else right and and in general if you're actually able to consistently clear them on a weekly basis so if you've got a good team you've got a good static group uh you're gonna get some good amount of you know a good amount of gold for doing it right like and which you can then use to buy other stuff the way rewards work in guild wars 2 it's um, it's very much like you farm gold to buy all the cool stuff you want. So, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, like harder content like this, it's just like a good source of uh, a way to get what you want, right? Efficiently, essentially. Okay. And what are the, what are the group sizes for this? Very interested in that. Uh, 10 players for these. Ten, so, okay. Like in between Final Fantasy and WoW, closer mm -hmm. to Final Fantasy. What uh, kind of roles exist in, and are they called raids? Is that a correct uh, term for what you guys are doing? There are raids in Guild Wars 2, um, but these are called strike missions. So a raid is kind of like it's, yeah, a, a raid is kind of like its own separate instance that has its own storyline. A strike mission um, is basically a boss from the story, uh, but turned into its own instance all on its own. So you just fight the boss. Yeah, and this it is sounds. A, a it mission. actually sounds like Savage from Final Fantasy if Savage was made to the difficulty that Ultimate is supposed to be. It sounds like it's that. It's like for the group size and it's like, its own story kind of thing that, that that makes that makes a bit more sense so it's it's definitely a bit unique and you're saying so before this and this was this raid that just came out uh 
because I know the dragons that came out in like February, March, somewhere around there, right? Mm -hmm. I think I remember seeing that. Yep. Uh, so, so that had challenge modes as well, right? Uh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, basically, the the expansion launched with uh, four strike missions, and then they released the challenge modes over time, right? And this was the uh, the final one, uh, the you know the most challenging one, the Harvest Temple, and that was released uh, just last Tuesday. Okay, great. And then you, and you guys finished that, uh, sounds like a couple days ago. Yeah, that's correct. Right? Okay, cool. And th that, so, okay, I'm just trying to, so you, when the challenge modes first came out, this, uh, this expansion, was this the first one that was like really, really difficult? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The, they were always intended to kind of ramp up in difficulty. So the first one was like, oh yeah, this is pretty challenging. Uh, interesting little puzzle. Second one, you know, it's a little, a little, little tricky, right? Third one was a bit of a step up, and this one is significantly more difficult um, than uh, than anything that's been seen, seen in the game so far. Do you think the communities had like a really a good or bad reaction to it? Because this is actually a very hot topic right now in games where WoW just had easily the most difficult raid ever, and you could mm. argue that they were tuning it uh, for, you know, specifically the race world first players, but then like the rest of the people who play WoW are sitting here like, Yo, like what's the, then it's like the most nerfed thing ever. Uh, mm. Final Fantasy just had uh, an ultimate that their uh, wow and wow devs, by the way, came out and said, like, that was probably a little too much. Uh, <laughs> Final Fantasy said the same thing about DSR. Uh, they said that their ultimate, they probably want the difficulty to be a little bit less than that. So, like, what is the reaction in the Guild Wars 2 community about the difficulty of this raid? Is it something they want to see more of? Is it is it something where they were like, I don't know about this? What was it like? I think a lot of the, the, potential complaints are actually handled by the reward system because outside of a few um unique skins you get a few unique skins for beating each one there's a chance to drop it and you can buy it for currency uh everything in the strike mission challenge mode you can get by playing the game right you're not like um gate kept out of stuff uh in in guild wars 2 whatsoever which you know you could say potentially diminishes the prestige a bit in terms of in-game rewards but also well it does mean that um uh, you know, there's not that much to complain about, right? Like, because, uh, you know, you can just you can just play the other difficulty setting. You can still experience the lore, the story, right? The, the epic cinematic fight, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so in general, people are overwhelmingly positive. People loved watching the race. They really enjoyed that um, mm -hmm. and found that it was a, a very exciting thing to see uh, who's going to beat it first. Oh, absolutely. Was it streamed? Yeah, yeah, it was streamed. It was yeah, that, so yeah. all POVs were streamed. Okay, cool. Yeah. Was it so? So something that I found really interesting uh, over long periods of time is like I uh, was not competing for the race world first. But we were top five world before it was being streamed, and like that was a situation where like the top five guilds did not release their videos until like you know five guilds killed it. So like basically the top five guilds all got to kind of progress through and strategize and problem solve the fight on their own, and then now in the advent of streaming you know, a bit of that is gone. Obviously it's like hard to go back to that, but like, that's something that we miss a lot. How did that at all really impact this race specifically with a lot of the top teams streaming? Were there times that you think teams looked at what you guys were doing and were like, oh, that's something we didn't really figure out. And they did that or something your, your all team did. Is that, is that an element in the Guild Wars 2 race? Uh, I, th I think it was a little bit. Um, this fight was pretty interesting. Um, in the sense that it has quite straightforward mechanics that are just very punishing. So everyone oh, kind really? of- Yeah, everyone kind of it's came- mechanically to, difficult. Yeah, everyone came to more or less the same conclusion. So there wasn't really much to, to kind of yoink. Obviously you might look at composition and uh, what mm -hmm. uh, builds people are choosing to play essentially. Uh, but it, it's just, it is very much a, you need to do these mechanics and if you don't do it everyone's gonna die right and if you lose a player well you're probably dead and you're not gonna be able to kill the boss in time right before it uh, mm -hmm. it kills you um so there was definitely an element of that you know you'd be keeping on what are they, how are they dealing with that what are they doing here like uh, where are they how are they positioned here like what are they doing are they running this build what are they doing but um uh, i think uh, a lot of it was a little uh, it, it was quite straightforward so it wasn't any kind of like crazy strat stealing i think this time around but i think there definitely could be i well definitely would be uh if there was a fight that was a little more puzzle like i guess but this one was just very we're gonna hit you with loads of things that are gonna kill you <laughs> yeah I, I love that. that i mean there's like a ton of wow fights like that as well where like some are just huge big brain and like uh yeah. well actually so this wasn't like a super hard fight but like that was a case this raid with uh with Lihavum, right? Like Lihavum mm -hmm. is an example of a boss where, you know, we got to go in there and problem solve the whole fight. 
And then we had fun because we had to try different things and like, you know, see which, um, are you familiar with the boss at all? Uh, not, not, uh, not in detail, no. Okay, very, very simply, it's just a fight where, where you can choose to kill any one of four ads and each mm -hmm. one of them does something different and you deal with the three that you don't kill. So you have to, you basically choose the fight that you want to progress. So like super, super cool fights where like you have to figure out the path to the end, but that's only interesting for the first team to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then every team after that is just like, you know, all it is is the, me it's mechanically not difficult and you now know the path to kill it. So you don't have to really think about it. Where like fights like Rygalon, which we just had, uh, you know, are just like, it's very obvious what you have to do. It's just extremely difficult to do it. So you're saying this fight was more like that. What was the fight length? Uh, the fight is around kind of the 12 to 14 minute mark. Oh, that's pretty long. Yeah, well, it's I don't a pretty meaty one, yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah, that's like that. That's I mean, that's like a wow end boss, <laughs> a little bit shorter than like a or around the time of like a Final Fantasy Ultimate. That's a that's pretty real, especially for mechanic, like a really mechanically challenging fight for that long is like really stressful. Was it like was I uh, will probably go over the fight here in a second. I just kind of want to like watch it with you and uh, look at. Uh, how the fight like really played out. I'd like to hear how progression went for certain parts of it and just know how some of the mechanics work. Um, but like, how was it? Was like the last phase really hard? I think one thing that was like really hard with fights like that in the past is like, it's so, so punishing to like have the really hard part be at the end. So if you ever get there, it's like you see it so few times to even get good at it kind of thing. Well, yeah. how was it like? Yeah, the, the last phase uh, was is definitely the part that it, it took a bit of breaking through to get through. And yeah, that uh, that is a pain point, right? By the time that the guilds were approaching, uh, getting to that phase consistently, it was like, oh man, you know, we've got to get through all this stuff that we know how to do super, super easy now, right? And then we've got to get all that. And then you just die in three seconds, right? And then you have to do the entire thing over again. Um, so yeah, like that certainly was a factor there. Uh, I, I think the general consensus is it's maybe a little bit too long, right? Um, you know, a, a little bit too long because it, it, it was very, very easy to screw up right then you have to go immediately back to the start again and it, it kind of limits how quickly you can keep trying it and keep figuring it out and managing to execute for sure so yeah it was it's, it's a pretty meaty fight <laughs> okay and then uh before we get into the video i do have a couple questions about the actual race so something i've noticed that like final fantasy players usually get much less sleep than wow players so our raids we know when they come out they're going to be like six days plus so we start with a very like regular sleep schedule early uh because you know anytime you're missing to sleep like if you get behind on sleep that's like basically when it starts to be over for you uh so you have to like stay on top of stuff like that for someone who's used to killing these in a day i assume like you were saying or less than that um what was it like having to figure out all of that on the fly? And what did you guys actually do when you had to have conversations about uh, how many breaks you were taking and uh, how, how much sleep you were getting? And then more importantly is how did you feel you guys were playing near the end of the raid as opposed to the beginning? Because I assume if you don't have a system for that, it really starts to affect you. Oh, yeah, it, it definitely uh, punished uh, my team in particular. In, in fact, our, our inexperience in dealing with this uh, almost certainly uh, actually cost us world first, I'd say. Um, we just, we, no one was really expecting this. It was like, whoa, what is this, right? Uh, you know, e even though we've said, oh, yeah, it's going to be the hardest boss ever, right? That's kind of what ArenaNet was hinting at. No one was expecting it to take this long to kill, right? Ah, you know, maybe like, it'll take like eight hours. Ah, maybe it'll survive a day if it's really lucky, right? People were not expecting it to take nearly a week uh, to take down. And yeah, it was definitely very, very brutal. Like by certainly kind of four days in, everyone was totally messed up, right? <laughs> Uh, and dude, having a lot of remind, trouble uh continuing the grind right <laughs> that reminds me of our first time we went for world first in old year which is the beginning of bfa is almost four years ago now mm. um or maybe it was four years ago uh we were going up we decided to go for world first uh right before and we were going up against method who's like one world first forever and wow and they've been doing this with so much experience um, and we went for it and we just, you know, had no idea what we were doing with sleep. So I feel like a lot of the same way where, where, you know, when we were trying to kill the boss near the end of that week, we had a healer that stayed up for three straight days. Cause after our raids, he would just stay up in the Twitch chat of our opponents. Just, huh. you know, just, just cause he didn't know any better, you know, just like noob, like this is just stuff you do and you have no idea what you're doing. Like, and then like, obviously the entire guild was just tired, exhausted and had never experienced this before that, uh, we definitely like hard experience that like trying to get kills that feeling you have uh i don't know if you can identify this or you had this where you know you want to go all night and try to kill it 
But then that that moment when you realize that the group is too tired and like a lot of bad mistakes are being made and you're just like, oh, no, there's no more. We have to go to sleep right now. Yeah, it's always it's always a really tough thing to decide on. It definitely was this time because it's like, oh my god, if we go to bed, they're gonna kill it. They're gonna kill it. No, no, we're gonna wake up and it's gonna be terrible. Um, but yeah, like it's it's definitely something that you have to manage, right? You know, you can't perform. Can't perform if you're tired. It's just not gonna work, especially if you're not used to it as well. And um, certainly, uh, certainly, you know, uh, players on on my team were not used to it, right? Uh, like uh, we, I have a bunch of like really good players, obviously, that I played with for um, you know for a really long time, or we. Were always tackle this content uh but you know um we haven't really experienced anything like this uh you know we haven't tried to um go like super super hardcore to grind, grind out this content because it simply hasn't been necessary in guild wars right you just kind of get in there and ah you know we'll have a good time have a fun evening you know have maybe have a fun few days uh, uh clearing it down and, and finishing it off but yeah this was really something new that's really cool uh would you say so Oh, man, it's so hard to tell. I don't know, like, your history. How, how long have you been, like, playing for... I'm assuming you've been going for World First and Guild Wars 2 for a long time. Oh, I mean, uh, yeah, definitely for a long time, yeah. Whenever, like, something like this uh, typically pops up, I'll be there, like, when it releases, and we'll try and kill it as fast as possible, right? Figure out all the strategies and stuff like that. Uh, in, a, in a lot of ways, it's very weird to, to talk about this, because in a lot of ways, Race to Worlds First hasn't even really existed until now right it hasn't been taken in this super, expansion uh, well i would say in a lot of ways ever there have been a few times like a few bosses that have been hard enough to have like a proper race um and people have like really really gone for it but in a way there hasn't been there haven't been many opportunities where the content is uh kind of extreme enough to warrant this type of um kind of community hype right and this excitement around this content um but yeah you know we people still try and kill things first but it's not it hasn't been taken as seriously by the players or the community um outside of a very few rare occasions i'd say okay cool um all right so i'm kind of dying to see this video but before watching it what what about this boss could have been so mechanically difficult that bosses that are normally killed in hours take six days. Like, was it a specific mechanic or was it just like overall the mechanical precision they were requiring from all 10 people was just at a level that they've never seen before? Like that I'm assuming that they tested and they were able to kill. I don't know how testing works in that game. But like, how, how was how like what exactly was it? Do you think? The I, I would say the big thing is that um, certainly in the later stages of the encounter, there's quite a lot going on. Um, and if you're too slow at handling these mechanics, you kind of instantly die, right? There's a lot of um, raid wipe mechanics and loads of AoE, loads of area damage, uh, loads of crowd control that requires you to position yourself quite carefully, um, respond very quickly to things, and avoid a lot of damage. Uh, and losing too many players or losing damage uptime will essentially mean that you aren't going to have enough time to end up clearing it. Um, there's there's kind of like, there's multiple phases and each phase has kind of like a soft enrage mechanic you slowly get less and less space on the platform until you just die so obviously the longer things go on the worse it is but yeah it's just uh nobody can really screw up uh you need to actually do damage which is um you know quite uncommon for guild wars 2 uh and if anyone makes a mistake you're probably doomed uh and you have to start all over again <laughs> excellent okay so i think what we do i think the best way to do this is actually going to be because i want you to have control because i'm you're gonna want to pause and like point at things with your mouse and be like, oh, this is like this specifically here. We had to like this person had to be exactly in this spot. So I think the best thing for you to do would actually be to screen share uh, and and just go through a video of your kill or any kill and just kind of kind of tell me a little bit about what's going on in the fight. OK, uh, well, yeah, obviously I've got my perspective. Uh, but the question is, do you want to, would you like to see what I what my team did or would you like to see what the world's first team did? The choice is indeed uh nice. is uh okay um let's look at what you all did did you guys do like a massively different strat or was it pretty similar and it was just execution uh pretty pretty similar we did one thing slightly differently uh but yeah broadly speaking it was uh, just about the same uh, I, I would i would i would like to watch yours because i mm -hmm. want to know specifically the progression elements that you guys had to progress through uh to figure this stuff out and even if it appears obvious to you because obviously mm -hmm. i have no idea what it's like problem solving in guild wars 2 
uh, but also you'd be able to give perspective from your progression on the things that are, uh, affected you the most. So I think I think that would definitely be the best thing. Okay, sure thing. Uh, so I will actually send you uh, again a choice of two perspectives then. So this is the perspective of a DPS player, which has also got, you know, that's, that's a clean POV, no camera on it. And here is my POV with my beautiful face on it as well. And I am playing uh, a support role here, uh, a healer, in fact. Okay. So whichever one, uh, whichever, whichever one you prefer. All right, let me, Ooh, yeah, let me see. Let me ask chat to decide. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's good. Let's see what the chat wants to see. And yeah, that yeah they want to see. Oh yeah, they want us. Oh, it's it's like a strong 50-50. We're gonna pick Ooh. you because you're you're on the stream. So ah, we're gonna nice. go with that. We're in. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yep. I'm, All right. I'm, so go ahead and just screen share that on Discord, and then I will just watch your right. screen. Give me uh, full screen. Just one second, and I'll get sure. that sorted. All right, I am back. I'm so sorry about that. Hey, no so, worries. uh, what I know about uh this so far is that you're pushing the you said you're pushing the orb around the room mm -hmm. yeah yeah so well, what is what is pushing it um so basically this is it's actually a little bit fittier than it looks like this is it's very easy to die here so uh whenever you attack it like with an auto attack or something like that it adds momentum to it in the direction that you pushed it right so in other words if you stand oh, wow. behind it it pushes it forwards right okay. um and you know every player interacts with it right so you you end up in this situation where you have to kind of wrestle control of it and try and steer it around the group uh while also dealing with uh, these ads coming in here as well watching out for all of the area attacks and uh, also those aoe's are expanding they'll screw you up if you touch them uh and eventually you'll die of the ticking damage so it, it can be um pretty is punishing this the first is this the first phase <clears throat> yeah so basically this fight um revolves around fighting a bunch of different dragons uh, and then it has intermission phases um involving the orbs in between so it's going to be uh all so this phase. is technically the intermission kind of before the dragon even yes it's like introduction phase uh yeah can you uh so i have a couple questions about that there mm -hmm. is actually a couple wow fights just like this uh, mm -hmm. In the sense of the orb being Dark Inquisitor Zanesh, but done a little bit differently. And then also Lord Ryleth in Firelands. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that boss, but like mm -hmm. you kind of, you hit the boss's legs to determine the way he turned. Kind of similar, but different. How many people were handling the pushing of the ball? Is that something that you uh, had one person deal with or multiple? So um, the the way that we approach this is that you, you typically have like... Um, a bunch of people out handling these crabs uh, to make sure that none of them uh, manage to get in. And a lot of the, and the rest of the group, we have like three people uh, dealing with a lot of the crabs right now. And then everyone else is behind the boss. Now, um, everything in Guild Wars 2 is kind of like an area attack. And this means that you can do both at the same time. It's very good to do that. So for example, a lot of the damage players uh, behind the orb are trying to kind of fire through the orb and hit the crabs as well. Um, so you can kind of multitask mm -hmm. a little bit there. But yeah, broadly yeah. speaking, we have a few players dedicated to making sure that none of the ads get in uh, and then everyone else is behind the orb because you, you want to do this as you want to try and do this as quickly as you can uh, otherwise it gets very very chaotic and you can end up dying horribly uh and that's not good <laughs> dude yeah this i mean this already sounds insanely interesting and very difficult and this isn't even before okay all right uh let's continue yeah Keep let's go so after we get to the final white circle, then we have to CC the orb. So we just throw a bunch of stuns on it and stuff. And that triggers the start of the first boss phase. There's going to be three dragons and they all have different things. And you're going to see a lot of recurring mechanics here. So we have to bait these red circles away from the group. So basically the two, the two players closest to the center get this. And you really need to make sure that that's no way of the group because well if you touch those red aoe's it's not going to go well for you and here's another really classic um guild wars 2 strike mission mechanic these green circles so the way these work is you know classic raid mechanic right um you need to have two players in all of these circles one two and three if you don't uh the entire group dies so yeah be in the green and, that, and that's and that's and that's persistent it's happening constantly or it's only when it expires uh, oh yeah, yeah. Only when it expires. You can see uh, here. Okay. If we just go back just a touch, uh, you can see the shrinking uh, internal ring here um, inside the yep. green circle here. Once that um, is, once that's gone, uh, it will detonate. Right. Then we can then go back to the group after that, like that, and this will repeat um, a little bit there as well. You, we're actually so using. Some... Oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. 
something this is like this is so strikingly similar to final fantasy the mm. circular room the fighting the boss off of the edge of the room the two-man soak is something exactly from final fantasy mm. spreading out with those two circles that were on there is are is almost exactly the same like looks like that that's actually so it'll be a little bit easier to follow along because I've, mm. I've done i think i've done every raid every uh savage and ultimate in that game except for the one that just recently came out so I'll, it, it looks like it it is at least somewhat based on that or similar from that um go ahead Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, the lead developer for a lot of this content uh, was very heavily inspired um, by uh, Final Fantasy, actually. So that is a uh, that the similarity is no coincidence. In fact, awesome. Okay, yeah. that is that is excellent. All right. So the first dragon. After you do those first two mechanics, what's going on? Yeah. So now um, there's just going to be a bunch of other attacks. There's like loads of laser beams. Definitely don't get hit by those. They'll they, they and actually this is another thing that happens. Here. It's it's a little bit hard to view here, but a lot of these mechanics don't just punish you by doing damage to you. These attacks are quite dangerous, and you want to avoid them. But a lot of these attacks actually apply a debuff to you that reduces the damage you do. Right. And because this fight <laughs> is um, quite damage sensitive, that's extremely punishing. Right. Uh, again, just like the um, the intermission phase at the start. Um, uh, if you see this AOE here in the middle, that will, it's continuously growing, right? And if it reaches yep. the edge, obviously, you know, you're going to have a bad time, right? So it, it, this is the essential DPS check of the encounter. You need to destroy the dragon before you get to the next phase. It's also worth noting as well that um, the if we look at the top here, the boss is getting these yellow buffs uh, that basically make it take 33% less damage from all sources. So you have to consistently remove these in a time fashion otherwise you're also going to be punished um and end up dealing not enough damage to deal with that because 33 percent it's quite a big number you know you, you've got to watch out for that um and yeah this is kind of the nature this is a thing about guild wars 2 as well there's a lot of stuff that's like um uh, buffs in the game are very like short term uh and th the thing about these kind of these reds uh, and green circles that's additionally punishing yeah. is that if you're too far away from the group for too long um you lose a huge amount of damage. Uh, for example, the difference between a non-buffed player uh, in a DPS position in a mm -hmm. raid and a fully buffed player in a DPS position, you can be doing double or even close to triple oh, damage wow. sometimes. Oh, wow. So way more. That's actually even yeah. more than Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy yeah. is like, has a lot of buff interaction between mm. players. That's even more more yeah. extreme. Double is an insane number. Yeah, so yeah, you, you need to be very consistently um, kind of with the group and getting buffed up. Like supports in Guild Wars 2, uh, in raid content, strike content, you're very focused on not just healing, but you're constantly applying applying buffs right like uh more damage lower cooldowns faster yeah. ability activation all that kind of stuff because there's no true holy trinity mm. in yeah. in in that game right it's it's a, it's not as black and white as that yeah so we get another bunch of we get another bunch of reds here and the key is you just want to make sure that there's enough space hold to on, hold on. green circles. i need you yeah, to, sure. i need to stop mm -hmm. for a second these sure things thing. rotating around the room are they random or in the same spot every pool uh yes yeah the the fights uh in this fight is, I would say, extremely deterministic. There are a few random elements, but in general, um, it's very, uh, if you play well, you'll always win, right? There's no, okay, uh, there's no randomness. Very nice. Because I, I noticed that like for someone that like, obviously I'm trying to see this through your eyes, I'm playing it. But like, I've noticed like on this poll alone, you've like weaved through like multiple of those lasers. And mm -hmm. I was like thinking like, oh, you might get hit, but I'm not sure if it's like the Final Fantasy snapshotting situation where like the mechanics already happened and it's just the animation or if you've just done it enough to where you know where they're going to be kind of thing. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, uh, if they, we, we had a lot of tries on this first phase. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. How, how was this phase in general in terms of progression? Was this like, even when you were killing it, you had wipes in this phase or is it is it something where it was once you were past it it was pretty repeatable uh yeah the first three phases in particular are you know they're they're gentle right they're a little bit more of a they're not too bad right yeah like so the main difficulties we encountered here we were just kind of surprised by the dps check and the fact that the mechanics were very punishing for failure right um because we weren't we weren't expecting it to be honest um but yeah in general these are not too bad like you know, once you get the hang of them the first i would say the first three dragons for sure are not really going to be an issue to you and honestly the the fourth and fifth like they're harder but once you get used to them again you start that you can do those very consistently uh and then eventually like you know everything except the last phase was very consistent right but yeah like uh, building up consistently certainly on the first three wasn't too bad wasn't too uh, wasn't too horrible awesome okay 
Yeah. Uh, the yeah, the other uh, thing that was going on. Oh yeah, sorry, go. Ahead. Uh, the DPS checks in this game. You said you were ex surprised about it. So mm -hmm. something you mentioned earlier. So so it's like basically when you guys like obviously your group's really good at the game, right? Like if is that basically never a problem in Guild Wars Two content? Like you will always just crank a boss because it's not designed for you kind of thing uh is this was this kind of the first time there's ever been like really really real dps checks uh i would say so yes so for context one of the hardest bosses in the game is called doom cm doom challenge mode that boss can be beaten with five players instead of 10 okay got it and also, just uh, just uh, as a side note there as well, um, there's no vertical progression. So um, it's not like you had better gear, right? You had the same gear when you beat it for the first time, right? So um, it was just the DPS check is so low that you can beat it with five people. Uh <laughs> That is that is insane, and it was still different, yeah. and it was difficult too. So it's like it's not like it was a bad fight. It was just the DPS check was not the difficulty. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The the DPS check, uh, the, yeah, the difficulty is um just you know not not screwing up. It was again a pretty punishing fight. I think certainly considered to be one of the harder fights in the game. Actually, took a good amount of time to take down as well. Actually, uh, it, definitely an outlier, right? Um, in the uh, in Guild Wars two for sure. So sorry, before you go mm -hmm. on, I don't need a super long question because I don't want to like derail this, but uh. You said that you there was no vertical progression, so you couldn't really like out gear it. Is that? Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything in this game very similar to like how a min eye level works in Final Fantasy? Um, so the n well, no, no. Um, so the game just has gear standards, and it's been like that since literally the start of the game, right? Um. And that's what's interesting about this fight. This fight will never get easier, right? Um, ever, actually. Uh, it will always be this way unless, like, the balance of the game changes. And old content, like old raids, they're also exactly the same. It doesn't need to scale you up or down or anything like that um, because you have exotic gear, which is, you know, the second best, and you have ascended gear, which is the best gear in the game, and you never that it will never get better. That it, If you have an item that's ascended, you never need to replace that item. There's nothing that will ever be better than that in the game. Um, so a, a lot of content in Guild Wars 2 stays very um, static in terms of its difficulty, right? Um, once it's there, that's the way it's going to be uh, for all time, right? Which is really cool in some respects uh, and also has some downsides, right? It means that if guilds are struggling with the DPS check, the only thing they can do is get better. They can't wait, right? Like a, a few weeks to Love get that. some better items. Yeah. But no, the only way- Or for the boss you... to be nerfed, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. And uh, they haven't really, ArenaNet haven't commented if they're going to nerf this boss. Um, but in a lot of ways, I don't think they will um, because this is designed, this is what the, it's for, right? It's supposed to be like this. This is intended. Yeah, it's supposed yeah, to be really exactly. hard. Exactly. You know? that, and that's, and that's um, good. So WoW, WoW yeah. is kind of going through a situation mm. like that at the moment where- like, it's the same, so Torghast, do you, are you familiar with what Torghast is in World of yes. Warcraft? It's like yes. a rogue like they tried to add. So mm -hmm. one of the issues with Torghast is they actually had a lot of the right moving pieces for that to make it good content, but the reason that it could never have been good is because they required you to do it weekly for mm -hmm. gear, Yeah, meaning that everyone had to do it, and that made it so that content was only ever going to be bad because it wasn't yeah. going to be challenging enough to be a roguelike, which is kind of the point. And people just had to auto complete it every week. Okay, well, that's kind of like the issue with raid is that uh, with raids being so hard at the moment, players feel like they need to get gear from Mythic, so they need to make Mythic more more attainable. So at at points, because you're getting like actual progression to your character out of it, they feel compelled to constantly nerf stuff for people to do it within their cutting edge season. Obviously, totally different game, things work differently, but like that that's one thing that's a major point of contention. Is I know there's like some of uh, voices within WoW that would want Mythic to kind of be more ultimate-like in the way that it, and this like to where it doesn't really drop gear. It's mm. kind of only for, uh, you know, the achievement of doing it. Uh, but it's it's not ever nerfed at that point. Like if you basically this fight for you guys is able to be killed, that means it can be killed by other people too. And there's really no point to nerf it. But then the uh, the other side of that coin is developers wanting more players obviously in this scenario would be players that are not as good to be able to actually experience killing it so it's mm. that's definitely a big like tug of war going on in mmos right now where people yeah. are trying to find the right balance between those two things
Yeah, uh, it definitely is. And there has been obviously, as you expect, right? There has been some complaining, right? And like, yeah, this, you know, this is this is ridiculous. It's too much. It's too far, right? Um, however, I, I I don't think ArenaNet will give in actually, um, because I have to say it is a really cool cinematic fight that very heavily. It's very heavily linked into the story. Uh, you know, it's kind of like the the climax, in fact, of the entire Guild Wars Two saga so far. Um, but there is a normal mode. And there is a version of it that's in the story uh, as well. So you can experience the absolutely sick, like, uh, cinematic elements of it, like fighting all the giant dragons. And you don't necessarily have to be a, a mega sweaty player. In fact, you can do it solo. The solo, um, uh, the story version is soloable. So you still have the ability to experience um, a lot of the same content, just at a different difficulty setting. So I think that... Um, criticisms of this and kind of complaints about it they they kind of fall flat a little bit for that reason particularly seeing as a lot of the rewards are actually obtainable elsewhere um as well simply by uh, buying them from other players there are a few exclusive skins each challenge mode has an exclusive skin um that you can unlock but and i guess some titles and stuff like that too uh but on the other hand um most of the stuff that people are going to get a hold of they can get elsewhere so i i think we won't see nerf to this um, I think. I think this is supposed really? to be it's supposed to be that really big aspirational thing, right? Yeah, it just it totally depends on the game because like mm -hmm. like I'm just thinking about that in terms of wow, and I promise everyone here we will go through the fight. It's just there's a lot of uh, I'm learning a lot all at once, but there's definitely like a thing like where I thought about that in wow, where like, man, it would be really cool for like people did you watch Holandris for this raid? The crab with yes, the bombs that are blowing up? The crab, indeed. Okay. It was so, beautiful to watch. You love to see it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a very very good <laughs> fight and a very hard fight. So like if if you want everyone to be able to experience what that boss is, that's what you want. The reality is I don't know how many teams that play WoW and there are a lot of really good WoW guilds that would have been able to kill that boss before it was nerfed hmm. uh from its version that it was originally killed. And then at that point I think the major argument is just uh or I guess yeah, killed it before their guild died. Yeah. Uh, rather than being able to actually like do it an infinite <laughs> amount of time. Uh, and that's where you argue like how accessible do you want this content to be kind of thing. Anyways, it's a really it's a it's a very interesting uh, concept for sure. But I, I would hope they don't because this is clearly a step out of their comfort zone. Mm. And I think they would if they are going to nerf it, I would definitely wait if you're a Guild Wars 2 dev long enough to see how the community. Yeah. Uh, interacts with this content and responds to it over a longer period of time instead of making any uh, rush decisions. That's for sure. Mm. Like, like nerfing it right now would be like, I think one of the worst decisions they could ever make unless what they were nerfing was something about the fight that in some way was unintuitive uh, and bad. But it sounds like the whole fight is good. It's just hard. And you should, you know, that's not the kind of thing you want to nerf. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that this fight is actually a really good example of, of what you're just describing, actually. It's very fair. Um, it, it's not some kind of super, like, there's a billion mechanics going on at the same time. It's, like, completely insane. If you really sit down and improve your gameplay, I think it absolutely is in reach. It, it's very well designed in that regard. It's it's not like a bullshit fight, if that makes any sense, right? It, it's... um. It's very much, if you do the mechanics right, yeah, you'll win. Uh, and if you execute your uh, class mechanics well enough, like, you will eventually get there. Uh, I think it's, for, for that reason, it's like a really good um, thing to, to aspire to. You know, if you're a raid guild and you're just getting into clearing stuff weekly, right, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's something cool to aspire to, right? Like, the, the final challenge of something that you can clear. But I suppose we should, we should probably watch the fight too. Yeah, we should probably watch the fight. Sorry, <laughs> I, I talk a lot. A little bit sidetracked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do that. Uh, <laughs> I can tell. I think you do that too. I can tell that you also oh, yeah. like to talk, which is I excellent. love it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's uh, <laughs> let's continue. Let's go ahead and continue. So this is the second dragon. And uh, one thing that um, is happening constantly throughout this fight as well that's that's worth noting is like a whole bunch of ads uh, keep popping up, right? Uh, they also explode when they die and they're really annoying. Um, so you have to try to manage that. And what we're actually doing here, this is kind of an interesting thing actually um, in, uh, in Guild Wars 2 that you can do. There's a lot of... The game was originally designed to be a PvP game, so you have some kind of interesting mechanics. So, for example, what we do here is we actually all stealth ourselves, um, so all the minions oh, wow. run towards us. Uh, yeah, so we go into stealth Dude, to make... Literally so they, shadow uh, milled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually works in raid. 
Yeah. <laughs> and so they all run towards us and that allows us to cleave them down and then obviously get more damage uptime on the boss. Um, when the boss is running, instead of having to kind of like run around and clean them all up, we're able to simply uh, stack them all up and nuke them down. And as the fight progresses, the actual really interesting thing about this is that the, the adds become more and more threatening. Uh, and in fact, in the last phase, the key to defeating the final boss is to actually deal with the adds efficiently. Um, it, it, less so than the boss, perhaps even. Uh, but yeah, so... Here's this, we're all stealth up, we're blasting this down. And um, what you'll see throughout this encounter is not exactly a rehash um, of the mechanics, but you're going to see um, the, the, a very similar set of mechanics, like the green circles and the spread mechanic, right? Uh, and the red stuff as well. Uh, so here, what we're doing is we're just baiting these red circles yeah. so our DPS players can you're move baiting, away. You're baiting mm -hmm. the red circles, you're getting... Uh, you're spreading out with mm -hmm. those circles that look like they're expiring on every player, so you can't stack, and you also mm -hmm. all have to move out of that giant arcing circle coming yes. from that side of the room. Yeah. How, how are you baiting those two red things that just went on you and the other player? Yeah, so um, the you get these by being the clo two closest players to this central orb here, right? Like, uh, in every phase, there's a central expanding orb, which is the soft enrage. And the two closest players periodically uh, get these red circles, and you must bait them, and not place them where the green circles are going to spawn, and obviously not place them such that it will impede your group's ability to move. Uh, yeah, the mega AoE here is a one-shot. Um, overlapping a circle with someone else is also a one-shot. Um, so there's, there's, it's, it's pretty easy to die in this phase. This is probably the first phase where players are gonna have a bit of difficulty with consistency, because if you move too slowly, you're just dead. Um, if you mess up the spread, you're just dead. If you don't manage to transition into, uh, the green circles, which are about to spawn, then you're just dead, uh, as well. Okay. So here we go, and then we're going to be having uh, greens. The big thing there also uh, leaves a bunch of lingering damage. Um, if, well, lingering one-shot, actually. If you touch that, you instantly die with no down state. Unlucky. Uh, and uh, the, the thing that you're going to see a lot here, we actually did it in the first phase as well, but we actually use this ability called Portal. It's very similar to Gateway um, in World of Warcraft. So mm -hmm. basically we can place this port a little bit, I guess a little bit. Oh, it's fucking dope. Yeah. You go in there and you just port across yeah. the room? And we, yeah, we port oh, across the room. Yeah. This is actually... Dude, this thing looks sick. <laughs> It, it, stuff like this is actually um, absolutely borderline essential on this fight. This is a very mobility heavy fight. A lot of our damage classes have teleportation. And in fact, um, uh, and it just kind of movement skills, because if you don't, you just lose so much uptime, right? Because the arena is kind of big and you've got to move around and you really want to squeeze out damage. And, and this one here, this fire dragon, is the uh, the first kind of real taste of the DPS check you get, right? Like, um, because you have to move out so much and you have to, you know, uh, go all the way to the other side of the room if you don't have a solid movement strategy and a good execution of your damage rotations uh then you will have a bad time here <laughs> uh question when you're watching players moving around you uh are they is that accurate up to the moment of where they are on their screen so is it like wow in that regard or is it final fantasy where they're like super giga delayed and they're not actually where they appear to be um yeah, I think it's a hundred percent accurate. Uh, obviously, okay, someone's cool. lagging, right? Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very accurate. Yeah, the co the combat system in Guild Wars Two is it's pretty well refined. It can handle um, a lot going on pretty effectively. Your frame rate might not be perfect sometimes, but in general, uh, stuff works. It's and you you don't die. You you almost never die for some kind of stupid reason, right? It's going to be you screwed up, right? And you died. Uh, rather than like some kind of weird desync or lag issue. All right, cool. Yeah. Outside uh, of that, this guy, guy obviously isn't that scary. He just like smashes you with his chin. Uh, don't stand in that. <laughs> oh, yeah. He looks pretty big. His chin's like a quarter of your screen right now. Yeah, he, he's huge. I mean, yeah, you know. Uh, he, I'm a little confused on what the like, mil can you rewind like five seconds? Mm -hmm. Yep. To like hit. What what are all these like little circles on the ground? They appear to be like like beneficial buffs. That's correct. Uh, yes. So um, yeah, that's just the game rendering things called combo fields, uh, and these are no. I remember that. 
yeah, they're, they're a little bit relevant here. You know, we can use them to blast healing, right? And to cleanse conditions and so on. But yeah, basically each type of combo field, like a light field or a fire field, for example, has a slightly different telegraph to it. Um, and that's what's happening there. And obviously there are some skill effects um, that are happening there too. Like for example, uh, the healers, the supports we're using um, in this encounter are called mechanists and they apply a lot of barrier, which is just a shield, right? Uh, are you a guys, lot of, um, are, are, how many supports are, are there in a 10 man group? Uh, so we have in this group, we have two defensive supports. So two healers that are buffing and two offensive supports. Um, so we have, uh, and some of our damage classes also have an element of support too. For example, um, we have some engineers here that are taking a healing turret. That's like an AOE heal, but yeah, like the core supports are our mechanists, which is what I'm playing and also firebrands, which is a type of guardian. So firebrands make every, you know, give quickness. So you attack really quickly. Um, and also a apply some other offensive buffs whereas um, I'm playing a healer type class that's focused on shielding healing uh, regeneration and also applying other key defensive um, enhancements to the team to reduce incoming damage and so on excellent okay is that god I don't want to like hard derail because I'm learning so much but the, <laughs> uh, that's like four supports out of ten is that number variable does that like like based on the encounter you bring a certain amount of like offensive or defensive? Is there class stacking issues or benefits, stuff like that? Uh, you're typically going to see, because of the way buffs work, they affect um, five people. So, you know, if you cast a, a heal, it will affect five people and it will always prioritize those people in your subgroup. If you, if you see in the top uh, left-hand corner here, we're divided into two groups, uh, group mm -hmm. one and group two. And so the way you approach build construction, oh, sorry, um, group construction in Guild Wars 2 is that you'll have one healer uh, in each subgroup. And you'll also want to make sure that you have all of the key offensive buffs, right? So you have quickness, um, which is makes you go faster. You have alacrity, which is cooldown reduction. You have might, which makes you more, do more damage. Fury makes you critical strike more, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to make sure that your uh, all of your players are buffed up because um, uh, DPS players, if you don't have all of these key uh, buffs boons, uh, you're going to be significantly less effective, like previously described, right? Like, you know, you could be halving your DPS if you if you don't have a uh, proper boon uptime on your squad. Oh, excellent. All right, continue. Yes, let's go. Let's go. So yeah, th this guy in terms of mechanics is not, eh, he's, he's not super scary. We just have to basically repeat this uh, big chomp attack uh, once again so we don't get eaten. Obviously, and this is kind of where you start to see the um, space restriction being a little bit problematic. You're going to have to kind of run around this AoE in the center and you have to be a bit more careful of the spread mechanic, of course, because you have less room and so on and so on and so on. This is going to be like a running theme as we go through the encounter. Uh, yeah, we get another set of these reds and then there'll be more green circles as well. Uh, and we uh, is, kind of, is this yeah. is this a hard repeat of what just happened, or is it is it altered in some way? Yeah, yeah, it's the same uh, the same pattern there. Um, yeah. Okay. In general, but what basically what happens is the the greens will be further away, right, each time because obviously you have less space okay, on the arena. Okay, so slight variation. Yeah, it's a slight variation. Yeah, but uh, broadly speaking, it's uh, very mechanically similar. And the DPS check is that sh is that shit in the middle reaching you yes. and killing you. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, if you basically if you if you touch if you touch that, you actually um uh you actually go insane, right? And then your team kills you. So you just, you basically get mind controlled, right? Oh, you get MC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have another. A bunch Did you do of the stealth in. thing again for the spiders? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So uh, these ones are really annoying too if you don't handle them well. Um, it, basically, these have a these have a knockback that will knock you off the platform and then you die. Oh, geez. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's really you really want to make sure that you stack these up, otherwise you just you lose a lot of damage, right? And you just run out of time because mm -hmm. uh, if these guys are messing you up and knocking you over, you can't use your abilities, you can't attack, you know, all that all that fun stuff, right? <laughs> oh so yeah. There you go. Uh, they also explode when they die, so you have to be a little bit careful on positioning. Uh, this phase is honestly very easy. This is this is like the re relaxation phase. Just don't stand on the giant laser yeah, beams, and, and you're good to go, right? He also fires out some uh, meteors here that one shot. Those are random actually, but they're all they're they're never going to like completely screw you over. Um, but yeah, how are you guys baiting that? Is it closest people to the middle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, closest people to the middle is correct. Yeah, that's what it looked like. The uh, the one thing I will say as a new Guild Wars two person is differentiating the buff circles and healing circles on the ground versus the damage circles would be difficult for me initially. Yeah. Like they just look kind of similar. Like they're all happening at the same time. It's definitely pretty crazy. You kind of learn to filter it out as you, uh, 
<laughs> as you get experience with the game. In general, they, they've they definitely tried to improve this a lot by making them, um, making the damaging ones, like, trying to be distinctive. Like, they're typically filled orange, like, you know, you, like that kind of a, that laser beam here, right? They, they try to make them as uniform as possible so you can always see what's going on. Whereas um, abilities that a player is putting down uh, typically will just be like a ring a lot of the time. But there are definitely some areas where the, where the telegraphing could use a little bit of work. Um, and, and that's certainly something that um, the community is going to give us feedback to the developers because this ultimately is kind of a relatively new thing. It's, it's unusual to say for an MMO, but um, this is kind of new territory for uh, Guild Wars 2 in some respects in, in making these uh, slightly more intensive encounters and with that does come the need for superior telegraphing for sure. It's, it's definitely something that I imagine they're going to be looking at very very carefully and make and improving over time. Uh, I think mm -hmm. visual clarity is very much on um, on ArenaNet's radar uh, for improvement down the line. Good. Nice. Yeah, I think that's good. Like any game, I think, I think mm. fights being intuitive and clear is like extremely important. Yeah, this does look like a vibe, though. You just, like, do the same things over and over again, and you're just yeah. blasting him, and it's just a DPS check. Okay, so this guy dies, and then what's that? So he dies right now. Does he stop everything he's doing? Yes, he does. And then yes. you do another orb phase, right? Yes, we do. It's intermission time. Here we go. Uh, so this one is a little bit more annoying uh, than the previous one. We only have to push it into two white circles. However, we also have to absolutely nuke down uh, this little mini boss here because he will actually block the orb. So um, this time what we have to do is we have to push it to the other side of the room where we aren't right now, uh, to that white circle that we can see just barely in the corner of the perspective here. Uh, there we are. Kind of like it's going to spawn over like over here um oh, yep there we go it's over there so we have to basically cleave down this boss while also pushing the orb over there and then we actually have some players pre-positioned over there not only to deal with the crabs uh but also to push the orb back right um after we've pushed it in that direction here and simultaneously we have to nuke this guy down as quickly as possible because otherwise we can't finish this phase uh the orb also has new mechanics this time because that's fun uh it fires yeah, out great. the yeah it fires out these bees randomly these red circles here these will instantly kill you um <laughs> so yeah watch out for those uh, some definitely okay. some good memes there and you can see that our orb team actually uh, does get memed a little bit here the bees go straight to uh, straight towards them and they have to push the orb back while also um, dealing with the crabs and um, also dodging those bees at the same time. Additionally, this mini boss, we actually deal with him really well here, but this guy is kind of an asshole. He actually has some abilities that hit really hard and you have to uh, try and dodge them here. Uh, although that's not entirely apparent because uh, at this point we would refine this quite well and we have some excellent burst damage. Our composition is um, very heavily uh, uh, non-damage over time, like it's all upfront damage, and that allows us to uh, burst down these monsters very quickly and efficiently. But yeah, and also, uh, bonus as well, uh, when the orb gets pushed for the first time, it gets a new mechanic, and this one definitely is a bit of a pain to deal with. Um, so Dude, of, this is so cool! Yeah, yeah. Instead of firing out bees, it leaves a snail trail, like a slime trail, which obviously makes it a little bit more annoying to push because you can't be directly behind it. You have to kind of like usher it in from the sides a little bit. Um, and if you touch that slime trail, you uh, you instantly die. Um, so, so, so watch out for that. <laughs> and then after we do this second push, we are good to go. Then we have to break the bar again. So use crowd control Dude, on that, it. Can you pause it for phase. a second? Yeah, sure thing. That is such insanely good fight design. You have, you have like two... Like, yeah, this fight was, like, really hard mechanically, but that's insane design. You have, like, the same mechanic or the mm -hmm. same phase twice, and it's, like, an intermission. Every time it changes, it gets new mechanics, and it's, uh, it's like, intuitive. Like, it mm -hmm. looks like you guys, like, have, like, a pretty good strat for, like, how you'd move that around. That is, that is so, I'm actually, like, really, really impressed by that. Yeah, nice. this, this was definitely some uh, really cool uh, just development and design from the devs. I think they really excelled themselves. When the normal mode for this released on the with the expansion, everyone was really impressed with how it was mechanically um, right off the bat. It shares the orb mechanic in normal, just a little bit easier, obviously. Well, significantly easier, obviously. And people thought it was really sick. Uh, and, you know, the challenge mode just pushes it a step further uh, to make it even more exciting than, um, than it already is. So, yeah, it, it really is some sick design for sure. Okay. And now it's on to the uh, fourth dragon after we're done here. 
Uh, this guy, I think it's one of those ones that once you get it, you get it, right? But early on, it, it's very punishing and very, very painful. Um, so watch out for these guys. These, these guys are real assholes. So these are some snipers that spawn and what they do is they'll kick you. Um, so they'll kind of knock you back. This, not only can that knock you off the platform, but, uh, for a moment, we'll see in a moment, um, uh, for a reason we'll see in a moment. Uh, that's also very, very annoying too. Uh, this spit attack here. If you get hit by this, you get a 25% damage reduction and a 25% healing reduction. So obviously it's really important to not get hit by that. Um, that also slows down revival speed too. So it makes you significantly harder to revive if you do end up going down state. Uh, and now basically you place down this red circle and then he's going to use his other attack here as well, which is going to be a spread. Uh, and then also into this shockwave. If you get hit by this, you will take massive damage. But worse than that, you'll almost certainly get knocked off the platform unless you have the stability boon, which means you're immune to crowd control or one instance of crowd control. Uh, you'll get knocked off the platform and then instantly die. So basically the way you deal with this is you have to jump over it um, to not die. And then we have, another, we have another set of reds. And, and you can see the snipers here can be really spooky because they, for example, could knock uh, me and this other player uh, into those red circles or into the middle or off the edge. Or they can knock you during the shockwave, right? And if obviously if you get knocked, you won't be able to jump over the shockwave, uh, which can then immediately kill you. Very bad. Uh, not ideal. So it's kind of important that you're aware of their positioning and your range damaged uh, dealers are dealing with them. And now we have another set of reds. Basically, the, the speed at which reds and um, greens spawn depends on the phase. And some don't have greens. Like this phase doesn't have any greens. Uh, but this one has more frequent red circles here. And as you can see, as we continue yeah, you, to do this, we end yeah, up with less and less space. The phase. Yeah, and you throughout the phase are going out with your other support, I assume, mm. and and you're just like baiting reds around the platform mm -hmm. uh, away from everyone else, and you have to kind of pick a new spot every time, especially as like the center is getting closer to you. Again, class or boss design where it's repeating that mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous, the spit is a is a uh, like an augmentation of that those circles you had to dodge in the previous phase, and then you are. Or you're you're like standing in the front and just added the like the chin slam is also a fight mechanic except instead of it happening on the edge of the room it's in the middle and sending shockwaves that's like mm -hmm. I like actually could not be more impressed in the beginning with the mm -hmm. beginning of this I think that is so good yeah very very cool stuff um and yeah that that one definitely takes a little bit I'd say that that one yeah what's is the probably... deal with dragons in this game do dragons just not hit you with their hands or breathe fire do they just fucking bonk you with their chins <laughs> it's 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 a bit of a meme the the way you fight big bosses in Guild Wars 2 is you kind of paint their fingernails right you just attack their hands but yeah they do occasionally sometimes wallop you uh wallop you with their heads happens quite frequently actually or they just fire giant lasers at you uh but yeah, you do fight a bunch of dragon heads in this phase all right uh, let's get it yeah so here we go now this this, again. this phase is like the first the first part where people get stuck um, and because these guys are these guys suck. Okay, uh, if you don't deal with these um, giants effectively, you will die within seconds. Um, so they deal absolutely colossal damage. They have um, a lot of crowd control, so they'll taunt you, so you have to attack them, or they'll fear you, so you run away and maybe run off the platform or run into an AOE. And they also have, they just do loads of damage, right? If you get hit by them, by their spit attack or their stomp attack, you'll take extreme damage um, that will probably end up in you destabilizing. And there's going to be quite a lot that's going on in the start of this phase, so that's not good. And we're going to see greens happen here as well. Uh, and and the positioning here is slightly inconvenient as well because there's going to be two at the back. And as the circle in the middle expands, it's going to be more and more annoying um, to actually to get, get to, to these. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to be aware of that. You have to go uh, the long way around. Yeah. Yeah. And the next mechanic that's about to come up is the one that causes a little bit of trouble because it requires the team to be pretty well coordinated in their positioning. So right now, well, there's also some snakes that knock you and can knock you off the platform, but no one cares about the snakes, okay? I mean, well, actually, they, they're kind of annoying sometimes, but usually they're not too bad. So we get this set of reds here. And then what you're going to see me and this other player do is that we need to immediately teleport um, to our team to get ready for the next attack. Um, so after these red circles uh, fully spawn, what's going to happen is the 
the boss is going to start casting a totally unavoidable nuke to the entire raid and also a very long duration fear. So that means that the players will run away, right, uh, in all different directions. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to get over there and uh, stun break all of them or they'll all run to their dooms and die. Uh, so it just kind of requires some good positioning from the DPS players to be stacked quite nicely. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, and then we have to react relatively quickly to te here comes the fear. We have to teleport in and then use our stun break to get everyone out and then reheal everyone. There's like a big nuke there as well uh, that we have to uh, reheal into a spread. And then we have to go through a portal to go to the greens while also dealing with the snake there. So here we have the next set of greens over here. Okay, so yeah, in we portal. go. What's the cooldown on portal, by the way? Um, it's 60 seconds uh, is the cooldown on portal, but with cooldown reduction buff, it's 48 seconds. Okay. Oh, it, there's also one thing that I should note here as well, actually. Um, this isn't, uh, this wasn't super relevant for us by the time we actually got to the stage of consistently or getting close to clearing this, but this phase is actually bugged. Um, there's supposed to be a spit attack here as well, um, but on the run that we ended up killing it, it just didn't happen. Um, it actually does appear to be semi-deterministic, but uh, it's unintentional. So there's supposed to be spit coming here that also um, leaves a massive damaging pool uh, that will basically uh, kill a player in two to three seconds um, if you stand in it and persistent also gives you a healing debuff so you can't be healed up after you take damage and basically if you are at if you are um, low HP or if you don't have the protection boon when that fear attack comes through uh, it will um, downstate you immediately and then cause instability and making it harder to spread there as well this is we, we do it quite well here uh, but this phase honestly was was pretty hard to crack um, at the start because it just required a it required some good coordination that is quite uncommon for raids and we, we kind of do the same thing here again here comes another fear we pour in a boom Easy heal. Easy stun break. We're having a good time there. And then there'll be another portal after this. And after that, the phase is basically over. That's 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 definitely a lot going on, though. Is is this is this mm. the first phase in progression that you spent a ton of time on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is. This is, this is the first... How many days or how much time did you uh, spend in this phase before you completed it? This took um, about a, a day of uh, a day of progression to get through. Um, obviously, we, we weren't... Um, uh, we we don't go quite as hard as you guys uh, would for a world's first race because um, this was actually. Wait, what does during... that mean? Oh, sorry. Uh, so this was basically th this was like during a work day and people didn't take time off because people weren't oh. expecting it. So it took yeah, yeah, um, it took it took basically a grind of I think around six to eight hours for most guilds to get past this uh, this point uh, to beat this guy uh, beat this dragon here to kind of get it tight enough to to actually execute and get all 10 people through and to basically be able to uh, successfully beat it so yeah this phase actually survived for an entire day um before people were able to get it down because yeah there is a there's a hell of a lot going on and, and also there's one thing that's really interesting about this fight is that getting a smooth transition is really important this is something that again a lot of um guild wars 2 players definitely myself included are not used to but i imagine uh, yourself you'd be much more kind of in tune with this you really need to deal with the ads well you need to make sure that you're stabilized before moving on to the next phase otherwise you're going to have serious problems right um in just being able to deal with the kind of chaos that unfolds uh in the early stages of each phase yeah it also leads to a lot of false progression where if you're mm. not fully consistent and you know how to get past something you run into the situation where you end up progressing things past that or lucking into a way lower pull when you haven't actually worked out how to deal mm. with that earlier stuff and it leads to a lot of regression later when you have to go back and change the stuff you did earlier mm -hmm. that's for sure yeah exactly right um, but yeah, that's basically the end of this phase. Uh, and there, there are actually a few bugs in this phase. Uh, if you phase it at the wrong time, things get super weird. I think it happens here, actually. Yeah, so oh, this, no. th this phase doesn't work quite how it's supposed to. It, we kind of knew about it, so we know how to handle it. But unlike the other dragons, um, his attack will actually go off even after you kill him, right? Uh, and so what we actually do here is we deliberately delay um, until after the attack goes off before phasing it otherwise things get really annoying because the next phase this one is also a real piece of work i hope you like orb phases because this one is quite miserable actually uh <laughs> oh whoa what is going yeah. on here <laughs> okay yeah explain this okay so now we have um the next orb phase uh, and this one's a little bit different because, okay, oh boy, uh, this one definitely took a little bit of getting used to as well. So we have this dragon, uh, it fires out a fireball that will kill you instantly. Uh, and also the orb itself is a bit of a pain. So it's firing out these water globs here, as you can see, 
pew, like that, these things here. Yeah, like that. It looks like the fire is going at the tank and then splits into two. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, well, it kind of fires, it kind of latches onto the... Uh, tanking in this game is a, a little weird. A yeah, yeah, I know. It's, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But essentially, yeah, it's like forwards and it pew, 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 it fires out that fireball. And it has a bunch of other attacks, right? Um, it has some whirlpools that CC you. It it starts pushing you around with like a whirlpool um, of wind and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, th this dragon, bit of an asshole. Uh, but yeah, the, the orb here is firing out water globs and you have to push it while these globs are being fired out while dealing with the crabs too. Um, because if you get hit by those globs, you immediately go down state. This is actually one of the things that really slows groups down is getting this, getting this phase consistent is honestly a real pain. Um, because there's so many things that, because you have, you're on a strict timer as well. Really, you have around 30 seconds to do this. You want you 30 to 40 seconds to do this. Otherwise you're going to die to the ticking damage, um, from the orb. Uh, so you have to execute this phase pretty well and getting hit by too many of these water globs and going into the down state is pretty catastrophic. Additionally, you can't start pushing the orb immediately because the champion here, this uh, boss is in the way. So you have to absolutely annihilate it, start pushing the orb when it starts to get low so just as the boss dies the orb will kind of cross over its body and then you go into the next push uh these orbs around the edge actually aren't super scary um they don't they, they're annoying they'll like slow you down and deal some damage but they're not the end of the universe uh but yeah the real key here is actually getting this push this is quite quite annoying to do because it, it, there's a crab that spawns right next to it every time um and additionally you have to steer the, it the around the corner are, yeah and yeah. the globs are still coming out at the same yeah, time exactly yeah so it's a bit of a pain to get that done. Oh, there's a bit of a bonus I forgot to mention. If you actually, if you over push and it touches the edge, it also one shots the entire group uh, with the orb. So that that's kind of annoying there as well. Because if you push it too quickly and you don't get the crowd control fast enough, it will just, um, the momentum will carry it forwards into either a crab or the edge of the arena and you instantly die. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty punishing. It's, that is extremely punishing, and that is, yeah. is... Is that the last iteration of the orb phase we see, or is there another? Oh, no. There's another orb phase. Uh, okay. <laughs> but that, to be fair, the, the, the final orb phase actually isn't um, isn't super tricky, actually. It, it almost feels like they... Almost feels like they didn't have enough time to finish it to an extent. Uh, but we'll get to that in a moment, I suppose. <laughs> that could very well be true. All right, let's, let's see. The, so this is, uh, okay, the next dragon phase. Okay, so yeah, this is the final dragon phase. And we're actually going to be seeing this twice. Um, the first time, there are no ads. And the second time, um, there are ads. Uh, and the second time is the one that was like the big roadblock. Uh, and the other really spicy thing here is that um, this dragon has twice as much health. So you push it to 50% and then you get another phase and you go from 50 to zero. Uh, but also the red circles don't despawn either. Um, so you have to actually be very careful with how you place these because you'll be battling, you'll have these placements in the next orb phase and in the final boss phase as well. Uh, additionally, the greens are quite, well, this is where the game starts to really force you to manage your positioning very well and starts to force particularly the support players to not be able to be on the group as much. So it makes it harder to to sustain and keep reapplying buffs you what you'll be noticing here in this perspective is that me and the other support player are almost constantly away from the group um and we have a very low amount of time to get in key abilities to sustain our team when we have a brief moment of time uh back at the boss um this attack here if you're in that initial orange right near the boss you instantly die with no down state and it fires out loads of these orbs here that deal heavy damage at the same time, okay. which is uh, which is not ideal. But the big thing here that happens is that right at the start of the phase, it's, it's quite there's quite a lot going on here. So we'll, I'll try and get it all. Um, the green spawn in this pattern here. Let's, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to turn around. Oops, hang on. I'm not sure I'm going to turn around. I can see here. them. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's basically where they were. And the bit of the kicker here is that can you? This green here is quite problematic because the boss is sending out a shockwave at the exact same time yeah. that the um, orb that the greens are exploding, and also firing out an orb that directly covers this green. So you can see our two players here that are assigned to deal with this green. And what they need to do is they need to take the portal um, to get over here and then dodge roll in at the same time as the green exploding, or they'll um, be destroyed by the orb and the shockwave uh and that, the, yeah. that is is am i looking at that correctly where the only spot they can stand is that extremely small 
sliver of the green on that side? Um, well, uh, a bait, well, no, actually, um, the, the green is actually totally covered by the AOE. You have to dodge roll into oh, it. Oh, well, oh so I you're see. A, you okay. need, yeah. I'm actually miss. Okay. I thought yeah. those, the lighter circle around the middle green yeah. thing was actually the, the circle. Okay. So it's totally covered. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have, yeah, you need to be in, um, in vulnerability frames or to use some kind of defensive. Um, oh, that's the first thing in this fight that I think might not be the best design. I think, I think, I think having players ever do iframe stuff unless is that like something normal in guild wars where it's required of you to iframe to successfully kill encounters um well i mean you it, i mean in a, in a way yes um because that's just okay you, you, then know, never you, mind. you use a dodge roll right um that it, it's kind of forcing you to use your dodge rolls and if you don't have a dodge roll available you get punished for wasting them essentially is kind yeah, of that, the, that's, that's great yeah um, it was just me, me misunderstanding how that works yeah, I, I was yeah, thinking yeah. like some like cheesy iframe cheesing oh, no. the mechanic by doing that, but no, it was clearly designed to be dodge rolled. Mm. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's very okay. much intended okay. that you time your evasion correctly that all classes have um, to do this uh, effectively. Um, or you, you you can use an invulnerability if you want, but it's not necessary. Uh, you simply need to use your evasion frames to survive this. Uh, and also, it's not entirely visible here, but the players in the middle green also need to be in the green and jump over the shockwave, otherwise they'll get knocked out of it, and then the group will immediately die um so yeah. that's the other the other issue there you know just yeah. yeah so then we do and, this and you said these orbs that are rotating around are not actually too scary yeah the, these ones are not super scary we were actually expecting them to be a lot more powerful than they are but yeah they're not the end of the universe to be honest with you um yeah they they do some damage and they can they can be annoying for uh, us me and the other support player because um they can slow you down and uh, particularly in the final phase that can be very problematic you can kind of get trapped in a really bad spot and end up dying um but yeah they they do minor damage and apply some conditions right like they can reduce your damage or uh, slow your movement speed or set you on fire all that kind of stuff cool yeah so uh, then you're doing this and, and then while doing this uh for people in chat the, mm -hmm. the reason he's Going so far back is for the rest of the fight, you this is all of that space matters, right? Yes, so you have yes. to be you have to be as as uh efficient with your space as possible. So you yes. I think you guys pixel put that on the corner of it. Yeah. Too. yeah. It, it it's it gets a little bit claustrophobic. We could have done a little bit better here for sure. Um, but yeah. The, the dodge timing there can be annoying as well um, because the shockwave will kind of be landing right as the reds are activating. So you have to you have to move out of the red very quickly and, and jump or dodge roll. Otherwise, you're going to end up taking a lot of damage. Um, this uh, this mechanic that happens here is actually, it can be a little bit tricky to handle as well. So that swipe attack basically one shots everyone and sends out these orbs. But there's also a spread mechanic going at the same time. So you have to be very careful with your positioning here. Um, there is a slight safe spot right at the um, right at the front. And um, the, the way that you want to deal with this is that you want to have a few players in the safe spot. In fact, you want to put two of the spread guys in the safe spot. Um, and if, as long as they stand correctly, like one right to the far extreme left and one to the um, right extreme right, uh, you can mm -hmm. fit loads of players in there. And this is really important, not necessarily for like surviving, but it's more like you want to be hitting the boss while that mechanic is going on yeah. because the boss kind of, cha the boss like chains a lot of attacks together here. Um, so you need to be uh, DPSing. And obviously if you're everyone's spread out, you're losing effectiveness significantly. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like an uptime thing that you want to, that is, pretty important to look at here otherwise again you kind of run out of time especially in the final phase there's a bunch of ads as well uh these ads aren't actually super scary because they have quite low health like this guy he's chasing us is a, is a bit of a pain uh, i think i actually nearly die here in fact i believe i do uh so this is my uh colossal feed here i believe um if that's about to happen let's see if it does yeah i think it does yeah i think this guy messes me up good uh well then again maybe not actually maybe maybe i live no you're this gaming way. Yeah, no, I think I die next time, actually. Yeah, I, I know I definitely die here. Oh, is it this? Oh, no, it's not that. No, I mind. But yeah, I think I mess up here. And oh, yeah, yeah, this guy who comes in, he, this guy messes me up. So basically what happens here is that I just dodge oh, too yeah. late. Yeah, yeah, he like smashes me and knocks me back. You would have um, had to have gone to the left. Yeah, and gone I behind him and jump. yeah, or just dodge roll through. I actually managed to save it by uh, reacting pretty quickly and teleporting out of the red AOE just before it kills me uh, here. So I just teleport away. Then the other player is able to revive me. Um, so we do get away with it without too much of a punish. But that was that wasn't good. That was a big mistake. The boss also does this spit attack. The um here the spit attack is actually kind of like a 
free DPS uptime phase, I guess you could say, um, at this point, because it allow it's actually the one of the times where me and the other support player, we have time to fully get in there and really heal everyone up and really resustain. Um, but it chains directly into the next green circles here. So you have to actually react quite quickly with a portal to take the portal. And then you can see these players dodge rolling in at the same time. But you have to do that after the spit. Otherwise, the spit's going to kill you. Ooh, yeah, that's tight. So it's a this, bit of a, and this, yeah. this looks like the thing that would have taken you the most progression time. Yeah, yeah, this certainly getting the hang of um, this part of the fight is certainly uh, the the tricky part, right? Like this, a, a lot of guilds, it's it's been quite um, in a way cathartic, right, to watch other guilds go for progression because whenever people get to this phase for the first time, they like die instantly. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But, yeah, they're like, oh, no. Oh, what a disaster. But it's fine. We get saved. Carried by my team. You love to see that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, you just push this to 50%. Um, and then away we go. There is actually one more green that can spawn here. But the green is really annoying. So, typically, you want to ignore it. Right? You want to do enough to damage that you skip it. Beat it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also, because the dragon do is the same dragon, if if the green appears, it doesn't despawn if you phase. So you have to kill it before it phases. Uh, and it would have spawned right after that spit. So we were around five to ten seconds ahead of um, Oblivion there. Uh, so it's, it's relatively tight. Obviously, by this point, we'd got some good strategies and practiced it a lot, so our uptime was good. Um, but yeah, definitely can be a really kind of frustrating point, I think, um, if you don't quite have the damage to do it. Hell yeah. All right. This guy's about to die. And now, the final orb. So uh, the, the big thing here is that this orb just fires out a bunch of projectiles constantly. Uh, we're actually blocking them using projectile block, but they hit really, really hard. As you can see, I almost feed to it there. Uh, but actually, this orb phase, actually not that hard um, because it doesn't have the ticking damage. So you, and I think that's actually maybe not entirely intentional, um, but we, we don't know. Um, and as a result of that, you can kind of take your time here. All you have to do is just not push it into the red like an idiot. Um, and don't push it out. Uh, there are a lot of ads spawning at the same time, which can be problematic. But in general, this is very much a relax. Yeah, that is. And don't I troll, can see right? how you thought that they felt. I, I bet you know what it could be mm -hmm. is is what this has happened in Ultimates before and in Final Fantasy, and it appeared like a thing. Not often is this the case in WoW, but they make some things near the end. Uh, it's a design element to make them a little bit easier because like having all the hardest stuff at the end is like extremely damaging to progression mm. because you just like like a good example is T. Have you done T in Final Fantasy? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I haven't played a lot of um, I haven't played a lot of uh, raid raid content in Final Fantasy. Okay, so so that game uh, like they have like the last phase is not super super hard because if that was like the hardest part of the phase, it would have like made you spend way more time on the boss most likely and there's also a long cutscene before it so it kind of gives you a chance to like kind of regather and do a fight that is more than 10 mm. minutes so like it's possible that they they like i don't know if they tested it and tried it but they were like you know this far into the fight it's like okay to have some time to uh mm. kind of like, like almost like regroup in a way yeah 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 okay. Correct. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I, I think that's kind of where this is, particularly because the devs obviously knew what's about to happen next. Uh, <laughs> Oh, so, is, it, is it about to get wild? Yeah, yeah. Now, now, here's the big problem. So now we have to repeat that phase that we did before. The same one. The, the same one as this dragon. So we're going to see the same yep. greens, the same shockwaves, all that kind of stuff. However, now we have these two guys. And, and in this run, it, it's in a way... I'm deceiving you right now because we actually handle these guys extremely well here. We even use like a pretty amusing strategy to handle the second one, this this guy that just charged off here like this, uh, this one here. Uh, but these guys are very, very annoying uh, to deal with. So they basically have massive crowd control abilities and very heavy damage output. They also have a lot of health and um, you need to get rid of them before you fight the boss. Essentially, they make the... Uh, the mechanical check, hard, significantly harder to deal with, and also the damage check, significantly harder to deal with. Because, you you know, it's essentially you've got more health, right? You've got to get rid of these guys before you can uh, do too much to the boss. Um, so the strategy that we opted to do here was to basically bait the red guy away. Uh, and we actually, um, they, they aggro on the closest target. 
Um, so what we actually did was um, on our engineers here, we take a bunch of turrets and we drop turrets on the red guy. So he constantly gets stuck on him and just stays over there. So we don't have to deal with him whatsoever. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, that's good. <laughs> and then we just simply obliterate the ice guy. Um, so that, uh, well, I guess he doesn't look like ice, but he's made of ice, but he's also all spooky. Uh, what that guy does massive asshole um he spawns down an area pulsing attack that permanently knocks you back and also chills you so you move at absolute snail speed uh essentially making getting to green you'll get knocked out of your greens you won't be able to make it to your greens you'll be too slow to move out of the swipe you'll fail the spread etc 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 um yeah th this was easily the hardest part of the encounter and it, honestly it does it almost doesn't really uh it doesn't feel right showing it like this because because we deal with it really well here. We get a really clean uh, crowd control. So basically, um, um, you may have encountered this mechanic uh, when you played Guild Wars 2 a little while ago. There's something called a defiance bar, right? Uh, and what this is, it's, um, it's something that strong enemies have that means they ignore all crowd control until you've done enough crowd control to break through the defiance bar, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and after that happens, then they get stunned for like five seconds, essentially. Um, so we get a really crisp crowd control here and we actually interrupt his first ability because basically if you let his ability go off immediately, it's really, really bad. And we'll just kind of see. If, yeah, so if we go over here. Oh, oh, actually, yeah, we did it really clean. We were like really clean here. So a lot of the time... Um, he'll actually start casting this big knockback very, very early on. He does like one attack, then he starts doing the knockback. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, and we just interrupt him really, really quickly to make sure that it's, it's um, positioned in an okay-ish spot. Uh, and then we just blast him down as quick as possible. You can see it's already on 10%. Dude, you guys are destroying the boss, right? Now. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that, that's not the boss. That's the little mini well, that's, boss, that's right? the ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you so, to, he, so you guys are hitting that, is that, do you have to like kill those as soon as possible? Uh, yeah, we yeah you want to get rid of that immediately because otherwise it's going to knock you around. You're going to fall off the edge. You're going to die horribly. Right? It's going to be an absolute disaster, uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah, we go for a you guys using it. You guys using that uh, that strat over there is pretty funny. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah. The little <laughs> dirt, that's good. It's the big brain, the big brain strategy right there. Uh, to get through this. But yeah, and at this point, after you've done that, the phase actually gets significantly easier, right? Because it's just the same as the previous one. Like the the tough part here is solving how you're going to get rid of those two guys, right? After you've got that, you kind of win. A, a lot of the uh, a lot of the progression point here was basically getting to this phase and dying almost immediately, right? Um, to the ads, right? Or getting knocked off the platform and slowly bleeding out essentially to this stuff. Um, but after we solve that, uh, GG, right? Uh, we, we got it, right? And we just have more, you know, there's more and more red spawning here. We've got to watch out for the shockwaves. The boss does a tail slam here as well. If you get hit by that, you die. Um, yeah, but that's, that's it. Ooh. That is... Harvest Temple Challenge Mode. Um, we are about to kill it here. That we slightly messed up our turret timing, so the red guy does actually come back. But but at this point, obviously, it's too late, right? Um, to do this. Uh, and yeah, we have won. There you go, two percent, one percent, zero percent. And this is like the final set of greens. And we actually had a plan for this because we 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 were aware that maybe yeah, we'd yeah, run I out can of time. tell that you guys yeah. had a lower damage pull and you thought you had to deal with this mechanic, yeah. so you guys were heading out for it, but you just. Add enough damage. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, you look really happy. Yeah. I bet. How, how long did you spend in in this phase specifically? Like, in were the, you at this point? Oh in man, Th this phase it took. Uh, we actually, honestly, it, it's it's a the, the number is going to sound really weird. This actually took like seventeen hours to do. Um, but mostly, honestly, it was because of a a, a very poor set of decisions by. Honestly, I've got to I've got to hold my hand up and say myself, right? Um, so when we were doing this, we were actually absurdly far ahead, right, um, of any other guild, actually. But, um, oh, man, like, the, 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 what went into this is really unfortunate. Like, we knew that we were going to have roster issues because some, some of our players had to go. So we felt really pressured to kill it on the Saturday. So we, like, grinded for 17 hours. Like, just go again, 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 right? And honestly, we handled the time really poorly. And ultimately, I have to take responsibility for that as the, you know, the raid leader and so on. We should we should just, like, slowed it down, been more analytic um, and uh, been more strategic yeah, about it. Is but I can tell you that mm. so sorry to interrupt you oh yeah, that, yeah, no, that, yeah please that is that is something that we mm. learned over time as well you oh, yeah. want to just keep going keep going but breaks are so important yeah. Yeah. like if you talk about like how long we usually rate 13 to 14 total hours when we wake up mm. to when we go to sleep uh but you know 
you don't have 13 to 14 hours of good attempts where everyone's fully focused because yeah. humans that just doesn't work yeah. so like you take a lot of breaks and you bide your time and if you're ever not entirely sure what you do you take time off yeah. and you figure it out oh, because yeah. you're not really losing any time the time you would have spent just chain pulling you're gonna you know you're just gonna wear yourself out faster and have worse pulls later that oh, yeah. night so that's definitely something where if you have you know, six to 10 day races, like we've done a bunch of times, that's something that you just need the experience to know how to do that. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't feel too bad about that. Obviously it feels bad losing. I know what that mm. feels like. Right. But like the, and losing when you're ahead, that's one of the, I mean, the, the race that I think of that it was completely different circumstances, but like when we lost eternal palace after being so far ahead, that was like feel way worse. Oh yeah. Uh, than than anything else but yeah like that that's something that like you couldn't really have expected yourself to have known how to do without having yeah. done it before from experience this, this is definitely where the eventual world's first team and guild called snow crows they they demonstrated their superior experience to be frank uh, a lot of uh their gamers have experience in hardcore raiding in final fantasy specifically a lot of guild wars 2 players play final fantasy not wow for whatever reason but yeah a lot of people play final fantasy um and um yeah, their uh, their knowledge of this uh, certainly gave them the ultimate victory, and their superior handling of their time management gave them a really big advantage. Uh, and you know, a lot of the players in my team. I mean, my team is super interesting, actually. Um, I. I I wouldn't exactly call us uh, on underdogs as such, but nobody expected us to be as good as we were because we're considered to be just kind of a guild that just. We, we try hard, but we're not like, oh, you know, like we're, we're really going crazy, right? Like we, we do as well as we can, right? We play the game well, you know, we try and do like, we go for kill times, right? And try and, and clear raids quickly and so on, all that sort of stuff. And you know, we're always kind of lurking there on the periphery. But I think, um, it, it, I, I don't think uh, people even expected us to actually uh, come in second, uh, let alone first. So uh, we, we did, you know, we, we did a good job. Obviously very disappointed, right? I, I you know. I know, it definitely sucks, right? You know, it's it's unfortunate stuff. But hey, next time, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean now, I mean you'll see. I mean, like I said, like the whole like underdogs, not you said not exactly an underdog, but like people view you differently. I mean, that was yeah, literally yeah. us old year, and we were insanely inexperienced, and and you know we weren't really able to win. Mm. Like when I look about it, like I hate the idea of losing Battle of Desire Lore and mm. uh, Eternal Palace. But, like, I know that, like, looking back on it now, we had absolutely no, like, I don't even know how we almost won an old year, but, like, like at the time of looking at it now, like, I don't even know how we were even able to compete in those raids because, mm. uh, you know, we were just so inexperienced and in going up against people who've been doing this for, like, eight years. Like, I mean, there's, like, yeah. in, in, in hindsight, like, there was almost no way that that would ever have actually happened knowing what we know now. Like, looking back at what we were doing then, we were fucking idiots. We had no idea what we were <laughs> doing. So, yeah. I would say that a lot of people on your team are probably going to feel pretty amped to prepare and do this before next time. And speaking of preparation, uh, you said people did the normal of this. Was the challenge mode released after you guys were able to see this content in other forms? That's correct, yes. Um, so the normal mode for all of the strike missions uh, were released with the expansion. So back in February. Um, and uh, yeah, the challenge modes released significantly afterwards there were a few uh delays with their development um particularly because the third one uh it was very buggy uh shall we say uh <laughs> this is quite funny actually it was so broken that the challenge mode mechanics started happening on normal mode and poor players who were just trying to do like the normal mode had to deal with challenge mode mechanics which obviously was quite unpleasant for them uh, and not at all what they were asking for so basically they actually delayed this one specifically um a, a good amount of extra time just to really nail down um some of the bugs right uh that were there uh because it, guild wars 2 for whatever reason this is definitely one of the issues that they have um, there's no PTR, right, um, in any way. It's all done internally with testing. And this means that, yeah, sometimes content, especially content like this, can release a little unpolished sometimes. Uh, and there were definitely some problems with that with some of the um, earlier uh, earlier content uh, that was released in terms of challenge. Yeah, motion. makes sense. I mean, the fa I mean, it's a good sign going forward, knowing that in this specific one right now, they... Mm. Uh, it looks like they took their time and made a really good piece of content. So I would imagine that any everyone there is uh, screaming, uh, we should probably continue to do that, right? So um, mm. let's see. Uh, 
Oh, someone said Grouch was in the chat earlier. He was happy to see you interact with Teapot. Let's go. Yeah, I think yeah. Grouch helped me out when I first played. Uh, yes. Uh, Guild Wars 2. He helped me get buy the my, game. Like, yeah. buy the, he helped me get it expedited to buy the game. <laughs> so that was that was a cool interaction. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, uh, a big hurdle to get over, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, dude, this was insanely insightful. I wanna I wanna reach out to you again in the future if I mm -hmm. have any questions. And this definitely makes me want to like get a group of people to i don't know what time i'd be able to do it because like mm -hmm. wow alpha is coming out like any day uh and then like season four is happening and then Dragonflight. so i'm gonna be like really busy over the next few mm -hmm. months but i would love to play guild wars 2 and do content like this with a group of people that haven't done mm -hmm. it before that sounds insanely fun so i'll probably reach out to you uh when it comes time down to doing that but this was like really insightful for me I'm, i thank you for for spending the time and answering hey. a lot of my questions i find this stuff really fascinating it's absolutely my pleasure uh, i think it's it's really awesome to see uh, not only the response from within the guild wars 2 community about this event but also outside as well right you know um i i would never you know i've i've talked about this a little bit on my stream actually how i how i'd love to see uh what it would look like if um you know liquid or echo tried guild wars series like how they figure it out like what what professions they'd choose, what builds they'd go for, right? Like how they'd approach it, right? And, um, you know, the, the way that um, you would identify things that are strong or, or not strong. So, yeah, you know, I, I've got to say it's uh, it's absolutely incredible uh, to actually be here talking because, like I said, you know, I I really have a huge amount of, uh, of respect and admiration for... Um, uh, what you guys do in World of Warcraft. You know, I, I always look forward. I'm always hyped up when I know there's going to be a new raid in WoW, even though I don't play the game myself, right? Uh, I'm always excited to see, uh, to see you know, Liquid versus Echo, right? Uh, or, or, you know, mm -hmm. of course, Limit versus Method back in the day. I think the first mm -hmm. one I really started paying attention was... Um, uh, was uh, the Jaina race, right? Like the, the epic Jaina race. That was, that was insane. Yeah, that was I've before we even streamed as well. Yeah, no, yeah. that is... Uh... Yeah, no, that's, that's all. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird when you're in it because, like, it's it's just, like, this crazy thing that, like, you know, none of us, I mean, like, dude, like, it was, like, well-known within the WoW community, like, the race world first, but before it was streamed, it was just, mm. like, you know, probably, like, what you feel like in Guild Wars 2. Yeah. Like, not a lot of people pay attention to it. And then now, in, like, a short amount of time, like, three or four years, it's just become fucking huge, and it's kind of hard to... Because it still feels the same as it did before, but it's just like now randomly people care about it. So it really doesn't really change. But I mean, that, I mean, mm -hmm. dude, if Guild Wars, I promise you, if Guild Wars keeps putting out content like that, boss, uh, there will be a lot of people who are interested in a lot of the things that I'm interested about. Wow, in Final Fantasy, that would be looking mm. to play that game. That boss looked like an absolute banger. Like that looked, yeah. that also looked really hard. That was one thing I learned from playing Final Fantasy is it took us a while to get good at that game. Uh, and, uh, the Guild Wars 2 is also very, very different. Actually, probably much more different uh, combat style than both of those games. Mm. And and that is uh, something where I feel like uh, we would get absolutely farmed trying to do this boss. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, there's just no way. We'd have to do, like, way easier <laughs> stuff. Because, like, a lot of people think it's like, yeah, it's, like, been all scienced out, and, like, the people who are doing this are, like, part of orgs, and they got, like, salaries and shit, and it seems, like, super professional, and, like, they put all their time doing it. And that's true. But, like, I don't think any team would ever be able to get a uh, world first in two games. Like, I think mm. like that's something you saw when we like went and like did the first savage raid in, uh, in this last expansion for final fantasy is like, you know, we were just raiding. It wasn't like a full team from our guild, but like, you know, like the, the, those people who play the game, those games at the highest level are, are like so good. And th mm. it takes too much time to get good. The, that good at these MMOs where, it would it's like completely unreasonable to think that you'd be ever be good enough to uh compete with the people who play those games full time and that, that goes for our game as well like no mm. like there's, oh, yeah. just, there's literally zero chance of someone being insane at any game and just going for world first and like even come close to competing like you you wouldn't have a chance right it's the same thing in other games so yeah no but we we, we find it insanely interesting i hope we do that and i hope i can reach out to you for that i think i'm probably gonna head out but that was a uh, yeah insanely interesting thank you thank you for all that information for sure that is got me hyped about the game yeah anytime right anytime more than happy to answer any questions or help you out a little bit or just you know just talk about stuff you know anytime yeah. love to see it okay thanks dude all right hey, I'm gonna head out. take it easy yeah you too bye-bye see ya